10 tips on how to prevent Zoom bombing. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone back to Steve Reacts. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I'm asking you just to go ahead right now and subscribe to the channel, like, share, and comment on this video. I'm here to offer 10 tips on how to help you from preventing your Zoom meetings from being bombed. Now you might ask the question, what is Zoom bombing? Well, Zoom bombing is where uninvited people come into your meetings and post inappropriate things in the chat and on the screen and so on. Now it is completely impossible to prevent Zoom bombing, but there are some security measures that you can put in place that can greatly reduce the possibility of your Zoom meetings being attacked. Now for those of us who are using Zoom for school and for church, we know that this is where life is at this point in time. Now some of these measures that are going to be put in place are going to require the cooperation of all the persons who are going to want to participate in Zoom. Now the reality is if persons are unwilling to help to make the zoom meetings safe then those persons will probably have to just go view on facebook or view on youtube now, at the end of the day we have to do whatever it takes to make our meetings the best experience possible so you're here for the tips let's get right into it tip number one don't share your zoom link or code on social media now i know i know i know i know this seems impossible because we all share our you know links on social media in order to get persons to come in but the truth is when you share your links publicly this is where zoom bombers are able to get the link and then come in whenever they choose to so posting your link publicly you stand the risk of allowing anyone to be able to come into your meetings so one of the safest things to do is not to post it to social media any at all that way you can send it to whatsapp groups or send the link out via um, emails that way you keep it a bit private so after you send the link privately some of the persons you send it to can send it to to their groups and other persons so that you can still get a good amount of persons coming in without having to put it on social media and hopefully those persons who it is sent to privately are not the real puppets who are bombing your zoom meetings number two set a meeting password it's very important to set a password to your meeting setting a password adds an extra layer of security and if you do have to send your id or link on social media this is what i recommend that you do when you're putting up your flyer you put the flyer with the id on it but don't put the password now the day of the event is when i would recommend that you post the password on your page that way persons who are really interested can come and be a part of it no, the truth is, it's not 100% a foolproof thing to say Zoom bombers won't be able to come that day, but it helps to reduce it just a bit. Number three, create a waiting room. Waiting rooms are very important for you to have. If you want them to change their names or to give them additional information, you can actually communicate with the persons that are in the waiting room before you actually give them access to the meeting itself. So it's very important to have a waiting room. Number four, set screen share to host only when you allow all the participants to be able to use screen share this is when the zoom bombers will have to come in and they'll post their obscene videos and so on because they'll you know they have access to share their screens so if you set screen share to host only only the host will be able to actually share their screen as a matter of fact please bear in mind that if you turn off the screen share feature the next thing that they're going to do is run over to the annotation feature trying to you know put things over the screen and so on so what you're going to do now is to make sure that you turn annotation off so that they're not able to share their screens or be able to use the annotation feature so you need to make sure these two are off number five very important you need to disable a load remove a participant to be able to rejoin now whenever persons are disruptive in the meetings and you remove them they can simply go out and change their names and come back however if you have disabled this feature once you remove someone that person will not be able to rejoin the meeting and that's a good thing to have so you need to make sure that this is set to disable number six mute our participants now not only for zoom bombers but overall where the meeting is concerned it's very important to mute 
all the participants that are in the meeting except the person who's speaking at any given time. I know in terms of where church is concerned, there are persons who will, you know, ask the participants to unmute their mics and give the Lord a praise. This is where the host is going to have to be very vigilant to make sure that when they mute all the participants, they're listening to the host so that they can give the persons the privilege to be able to unmute themselves. But you can reduce a lot of talking and reduce the Zoom bombers from being able to say the things that they want with their mics open. And doing this is very simple, it's very easy, and it's very effective in helping to prevent unwanted um, interruptions while the meeting is happening. Number seven, block entry from users from a specific country or a region. Now this might not work for everyone, but if you suspect that the persons who are bombing your Zoom meetings are from a certain region or from a certain country, then you can block persons from that region or from that country from ever being able to join your Zoom meetings. However, if you do this, it will mean that other persons from that country or from that region who legitimately want to join your Zoom meeting will not be able to join. So again, this is effective, but it might not work for everyone. It can only work in specific cases. So if this one works for you, use it. But if not, you can also omit this one. Now we are getting into the section where not only will the host will need to do something, but the participants will also need to play a role in ensuring that the Zoom meetings are the safest as possible. Now, we do know there are a lot of persons who, you know, just want to come into Zoom and just be able to do whatever they want. However, for security purposes, persons are going to have to be willing to do some things to help the host to make the Zoom meetings um, safe. Now, with that being said, we are at number eight only allow authenticated users to join the meeting. Now, this means that the host is going to set it so that only persons who are authenticated by Zoom can join your meeting. I know, I know, I know. There are persons who are not going to want to go sign up with Zoom, but signing up with Zoom and having your Zoom account, it's so easy just to do it. You just simply have to go over to the Zoom site and just click sign up and just follow the procedures that are there and within no time, voila, you have a Zoom account. Now, why this is very safe and important? When you have a Zoom account, it means that you're going to have an email address that is linked to your account. Now, this adds an extra, extra, extra layer of security because what it does, it means that the host will be able to see all the persons that are in the Zoom meeting with their email address because each person's email address is going to be tied to their Zoom account. So if somebody violates, the host will be able to identify that person and be able to report them to Zoom. Now what is this going to do? It's going to allow the host to be able to report those persons with those email address. When those email address are reported to Zoom, Zoom will be able to block those persons from joining Zoom ever again. So they won't be able to come back in your meeting and also to really uh, mess with other people as well. So it's a win-win for both you and for the persons who those persons would really have messed with. So we're gonna ask users, just simply sign up and have a Zoom account. We are now at number nine. Very important, use correct names. Again, bombers can use fake names and so on, but it adds something when you see somebody with a, you know, probably a strange name, it can allow you to profile that person before letting them into the meeting. So it's always good. I know persons want to just use the phone names or want to just use initials and so on, but it's always good to have persons to use their correct names and where they're representing. That helps you to know that, okay, this is that person. And if you see someone coming in who is not willing to do that, again, it's simple. That person would just not be allowed into the meeting. It adds protection for you. Number 10. And this is the one that I know most persons are not gonna want to do. But again, I guarantee you that it will add an additional layer of security. Number 10 is everyone who's coming into the Zoom meeting, turn their cameras on. I realize that so many persons want to come into Zoom and they want to have their cameras off. Again, I get it for various reasons. Persons are doing things and are listening to the meeting and whatever, but to add security, it's best to have person's camera turned on. The Zoom bombers are not gonna to want to have their cameras on. So from once you realize that you let somebody in and that person doesn't want to turn their camera on, then you know this person is probably just waiting for the right opportunity just to start to do something inappropriate. So you just need to kick that person up before they start doing anything crazy. And if it is somebody who's legitimate, who's doing this and doesn't want to turn on their camera, then that person will just have to understand that if they don't want to abide by the guidelines, then they will simply have to be kicked out. I would say that persons need to have their cameras on at least a half an hour or so are permanent 
throughout the meeting so that the host is able to monitor all the persons that are there. Now again, I want to even say this to especially persons that are in church. Um, it adds such a better experience when your cameras are on. When worshippers are able to see other worshippers worshipping, whether they're knocking a tambourine, even if they're not hearing them, it adds a level of motivation to worship. So the reality is when persons have the blank screens, it really allows the atmosphere to be dull. But when persons are on, on, you know, on camera, it, it does something to the entire atmosphere of the service. So again, I'm saying that what you need to do, make sure your cameras are on. All right, everybody, so those are my 10 tips to help to prevent Zoom bombing. Well, to prevent or at least reduce the possibility of having a Zoom bomb. If this video has been helpful to you, please like, subscribe, and share, and leave a comment. It really helps the channel to grow. So this is Steve saying, catch you on the next one.